recently had an opportunity to interview assistant GM Jeff Peterson of the Nets and director of college scouting B.J. Johnson. And I started the conversation by asking Jeff the challenges of preparing for the NBA draft with the COVID-19 restrictions. It was certainly a challenge, Michael. Um, fortunately for us, uh, and we have a tremendous scouting staff, um, we'd like to pride ourselves on being prepared. Um, so obviously pre-COVID, things were very normal. Um, we felt like we were in a really good place from a scouting and a, a draft standpoint. Uh, once COVID hit though, that's when, of course, more challenges presented themselves. Um, so the obvious, you know, no more meetings in person, we had to move to Zoom. Um, but it, it was good. It presented, again, it was a different, unique challenge, um, a way for us to kind of pull together and, and um, fight through something that, you know, made us a little bit uncomfortable at the beginning. But um, I think it was, it was a really good opportunity for us. Yeah, I'd echo what Jeff said, Michael. Um, it was actually, I think, it ended up being a blessing, you know, for us in the skies a little bit where, um, you know, the seasons ended. You kind of expect to go through your normal range of processes. But now, Oh, we had to bring our, our less tech, technology savvy um, scouts up to speed in terms of how to use Zoom. Um, but what it really did was um, it, it allowed us to create some better bonds, you know, with one another. We had more frequent meetings. Uh, we were able to see each other's face more often as opposed to just a conference call. We were able to watch video together and comment on those things. Um, you know, so it really ended up, I think, strengthening, strengthening our relationships, strengthening our bonds, and allowed us to go, go deeper on prospects. You know, it's kind of funny that in 2020, I think everybody's feel like this year has lasted forever. Um, and for um, for us as a scouting department, as even for the prospects, you know, the draft got moved a couple of times. So we've had to go over guys over and over again. But it's given us a chance to really kind of go deeper on, on those prospects and feel like we're, you know, very well prepared for this draft. What was that evaluation process like in trying to, you know, get to know these prospects under, you know, obviously unprecedented circumstances? For us, it was a bit unique this year with us hiring Coach Nash in the middle of it all as well. Typically, we'd like for our head coach to spend time with these guys. And, um, you know, of course, he's just as part of the process, as much as part of the process as any of us. Um, but that couldn't happen this year. So that was probably the other biggest challenge. But again, fortunately for us, I, I think we've done a really, really good job of being prepared, staying prepared, and we can educate Coach Nash and the rest of the staff on, you know, who we like and, um, what we think is going to fit us the best. All right. How would you describe the differences with the war room? I, I think, the, you know, the biggest difference is just going to be the amount of people that are allowed in the war room. Um, of course, we want to abide by the uh, proper uh, protocols, social distancing, um, and of course, having masks on while we're in the, in the war room. So um, that's going to be the biggest difference. You know, again, touched on a little bit earlier, but we have a ton of scouts who don't live in Brooklyn. Um, typically for the draft, we bring those guys in um, from all across the world. Cause again, they, they put so much work in for, you know, for years up until this moment. Um, so that's going to be a challenge, not having those guys a part of it um, in, in person, I should say. I remember talking to uh, Sean a few months ago and he said, one thing he misses, you know, with this whole COVID situation is, you know, being in the office as often as you used to, but uh, joking with you guys and being the butt of jokes. <laughs> he really misses that. Uh, what, what is the interaction like, you know, these days? Because I, I, you, you guys work really hard, but you're a lighthearted group. What is the interaction like, you know, under COVID? Yeah, I think the jokes are still flying, so <laughs> it's just virtually now. But, um, but yeah, it, you know, to me, again, we, we've had a chance to have some, you know, creative interactions with everyone and, and, I feel like I've gotten to know my coworkers better, you know, at, at times, you know, just in terms of, you know, having some um, kind of more focused times, really be able to, to really not be as pressured, you know, in terms of time um, in certain respects of it to be able to really get to know them and their thoughts on things in a, even in a different way, in a more focused way. Last thing for you guys, what are your visions for this Nets 2020-2021 roster? Excitement. You know, this is kind of what, you know, <laughs> I remember my first year here in Brooklyn, um, we won, what, 20 games or whatever it was. So to see everything, you know, really crescendo up, you know, from all, all the time and all the people that have been along the way, the journey to all the effort that they put in, you know, those that are still here, those that aren't here, um, just to see all that kind of come to this point where we're able to compete, you know, at, a, at the highest level. I'm going into my second season with the organization, but um, to come in and see the, the culture and the level of expectations that these guys have set, and now they're getting to reap the benefits. It's, it's really, really neat. Um, so, you know, we're going to continue to put guys out there who are 
competitors, guys who are selfless, um, and guys who just love the game, want to get better, uh, not, af not afraid of the challenge. So very, very exciting, as BJ said.